Hey guys, so today we'll do the bolt thingy, the bolt pickup. As you can see, all the items like go towards me in random directions as I move closer to them. And we're also going to complete our bombs. I know, it's kind of chaotic, but it works and we can like mess around with the throwback later we are just concerned about the actual logic of it and we can just do final adjustments later so yeah we get some errors but these are for these are not actual errors they are just warnings because some stuff do not like simulate physics and so when, when we try to add forces it's just doing nothing so yeah I'll just do that and there we go so we'll just start from the ball start from the bolts it's just a sphere very small one so yeah we got the scene or the default scene component as the root because we don't want the sphere for the root I'll explain to you later why this happens because we just move the scene towards the player but the sphere does like a random offset orbit so I've got a couple of variables bolts min, bolts max, how many bolts is the player going to be given and a couple of amplitudes along with its curves a time variable and an animation started so when they begin play we uh, calculate the amplitude randomly well, the X and Y are totally random from minus 150 to 150 but the Z amplitude is uh, from 0 to 100 to 200 because we don't want the bolt to go below the ground where we are while we're picking it so now on our tick event we check for our animation start so if the animation has not started we just go down there grab the character and check if his distance from our current actor is uh, less than 300 if it is we're going to start the animation and yeah we just set this variable if it's true the animation is going to start but as well as this part is going to to start as well so we just set our actor's locations where our sphere is because this thing simulates physics right there but uh, this thing is like immovable so the sphere could be wiggling around and stuff but the actual actor stays in one place why do we use this trigger right there because we are doing a second rain check right there if the player is able to pick up this and if, if we just do that it may stop uh, interpolating while we pick up the items because the orbit is random and we can't know how much is the greater distance exactly that's going to reach so that's a bit of insight now if the animation has started we're just going to grab the character again and do a crap load of calculations so first we're going to check if the bolt is close enough to the player so if it's uh, less than 2500 units close we're just going to hit add bolts and then destroy the actor now the add bolts is a new function, it just grabs the bolts, adds to the current one and that also updates the gameplay UI widget if it's valid, so yeah. Now if it's not close, we're actually going to set the simulate physics and collision enabled to false. These go together because if you like uh, disable the collision first then simulate physics is going to throw an error so we don't want that then we're going to interpolate the the actual actor not the sphere bear in mind just the actor so when I talk about the actor it's the actual scene component that you can't see but when I talk about the sphere or the bolt it's the actual sphere that you can't see so we're doing two invis an invisible slab and a visible thing so the invisible thing is just lerping the actor linearly in a straight line aka 
to the player with an uh, interpolation speed of a thousand and bear in mind this is the constant interpolation without easing and we just set our actor's location to that using the target to be our player's location and then we update our time variable so it starts from zero and as soon as this progresses it goes up to yeah just ascending till the thing reaches the player and then we add the set the, the world location of the sphere this could be actually referred to as a set relative offset node but this node is non-existent on unreal so we kind of have to build a custom implementation it's just going to make a this uh, random relative offset vector and grab the actor's location with the scene add them together and set the sphere's location this time not the actor's location so it can like fly around and stuff and we should uh, yeah that's pretty much it hit teleport as well if you want it's the same thing so just for safety now about this calculation we've got uh, three curves that will actually look like this so I try to keep them kind of differentiated so yeah that's the X that's the Y that's the Z so they've got two characteristics one is that they've got one extreme and the other one is that they got two zeros so on the start which is time zero and on the end which is time one the value is zero and then one extreme probably give it a value of one that's the best solution so yeah and we're actually based on our calculated random amplitude up there we've got a crap ton of variations from the curve so we get the time multiplied by two because we want uh, our whole animation to play faster clamp it to zero and one and then just grab a, f a float value from uh, each curve multiplied by the corresponding attitude amplitude and make the vector so this is going to essentially create a random relative location orbit I essentially want to do this uh, with a bezier curve but this is a more easier less computationally heavy approach than explaining how bezier work and yeah that's basically it for that you might want to play around with this multiplier right there and this interpolation speed because you want to be relatively fast that's the whole thing so the bolt let's say this is a bolt and the red box is our player so the actual actor is going to go like nearly towards the player but the actual sphere is going to have an extra offset each frame which is like this or going inside or up and turn and go back and on the character based on our amplitudes that we calculate right there and our curve assets <coughs> that's basically it for the bolt I'm going to have some static meshes made for me so we can like see some graphics and stuff gradually like the boxes oh and the download link for this will be provided in the description is it's inside the forum post on the forum so go there command it now on our bone grid well let me explain something first so we've made our boom tick boom logic so we need a damage type for the damage that the actual bomb crate is going to apply so that would be an explosion damage type just based for for from the actual damage type class we just want it for simple tracking purposes maybe we want to do an extra thing when our player gets uh, killed by a bomb I don't know this will we'll see if it works in the future but nice addition organization so I've added an extra layer of protection by making a variable called is booming so we don't want to call the event boom two times while this is happening because it's taking kind of a long time not like many seconds but a significant amount of our processor speed well not that significant but it could happen two times and till this finishes we don't want this called again so we just use a simple lock mechanic right there so 
if it's not booming set to booming and if it's booming do actually nothing just cancel the event so then we're actually going to get the all actors of class actor I know this seems like a pain in the butt but bear with me here so for each actor we're just going to grab the ones that are close to the uh, actual crate so 300 unreal units 3 meters sounds good to me and we're just going to if it's true we're just going to add them to our targets array which is the stuff that we want to check that are bombable so we just bomb the actors that have got a primitive component that's a component that simulates physics physics can be moved thus forces can applied and some extra stuff so yeah i create this array as well just actor references now when this loop is completed we're going to remove ourselves from this actor array because we don't want the same box that's going to be destroyed to get uh, destroyed the second time as well crazy stuff will happen because it's pe already pending destroyed so then we're going to do a for each loop get the root component of each actor and if it's a primitive component we're just going to calculate the direction of the force multiplied by something and then add the force now we're just going to take acceleration change as well because we need it this primitive component checks if the, if the player has got an actual if the actual we are accessing has got a primitive component that means if it's simulating physics or it can be moved that's why I get the warnings but you can also check if physics is enabled for that component it's not needed, it's not an error, it's just a warning from the engine it's not going to bother anyone on the final build for example this is the basic uh, vector math calculating the direction of our force now bear in mind we do not use the actual actual location which is the center of this box we i added an arrow down there which is uh supposed to be the how i'm going to say this to you so instead of using the actual location we're just using the arrows location why because a force that's parallel to the ground towards a physics actor will do nothing due to, due to free suit to friction but if it's like going upwards it's going to throw him a bit in the air and this and push him and then we've got actually an actual effect an actual visual so now we do an extra check here which I actually need to place right down there because it doesn't matter if it's only the primitive component we just want everything so yeah basically we are just going to also check if this component is destructible because we want to destroy it so if it's something like a bolt crate if we just apply force it will not get destroyed we need to apply actual damage and we do that with apply radius damage which is uh, a property of the destructible component you will not find this method anywhere else so use the origin as the actual destructible location base damage of 10,000 we just want to seriously destroy and fracture it we don't want to be in a question oh is it going to fracture because I don't know how the actual resistance is being calculated just add something big so it gets blown up damage radius 100 this is the actual dimensions of the box and instead of using impulse strength which is zero we don't want it to launch in the air and we also take full damage no resistance to the stuff this whole thing happens if there is a primitive component successful cast if it's not we're going to get the grandchildren and children and other children all the descendants as it states right there of the actual root component and look through all of them do the exact same thing for each one of them so this part is this part and that's it so that's why you have this logic now another thing on the end of all this looping nonsense we actually hit apply radial damage so base damage of 20 that's the damage that the actual box is going to do to our player as well and we just exclude ourselves because you know it's pretty obvious so do full damage ticked damage prevention channel 
We don't want a actual damage prevention channel in general because the levers are structured this way but you can just do something like world static so the damage does not go through walls and stuff also tick to full damage and set our explosion damage class to explosion damage type and do a damage radius as big as that range was right there so it's 300 now if a bomb crate gets blown up the bomb crates near it need to blow up as well. So we implemented a new event called event any damage and if we take damage it's simply going to boom again and also override this part right there due to our booming variable if any weird thing happens so we avoid any errors that way. This is why if I place two of these near to each other and I take one of them the other one is going to blow as well and if I go and just like do that you can see no problems and the debris just gets removed and this this concludes the tutorial so the next time we're going to hopefully add some meshes to the gravel points as well and change a bit the ammo pickup mechanic and do the health box and we're ready to do some serious menu stuff Thanks for watching and see you next time. Oh, and by the way, go ahead and visit that forum link.